Hey guys, so if you know me, you know that I'm involved in a lot of uh, open source projects. I'm really invested in open source, and the, one of the greatest things that comes out of open source is collaboration. Now with collaboration, there are some trade-offs, and one of the biggest ones is trying to do remote debugging. And so when I say remote debugging, I mean somebody comes to me with an issue, and they want me to help find what the issue is with their program. The biggest problem is, is the fact that if they're not using something like Git, or anything like that, then I don't really have a way to actually see what's changed in their version. So say for example, yes, they can have a available version, but I don't know what's changed in their newer version, then they would have to package it up and send it to me so that way I can look at the source code. Now, while the source code um, would be available to me if they use something like GitHub, a lot of people don't use this, um, even though I think using some sort of a remote repository is obviously really important, so that way you can keep track of your changes and you can let the community know what's going on. I understand that some people just are caught in their ways and aren't going to listen to me, so I figured I'd provide a way for them to at least share their code with me. So a really often situation that causes these sort of issues is when you have a multiple file project. So something like a shell script is pretty easy to just send over. You just take one file, put it into a paste bin site like website, and then I can just copy paste or however I want to get it from that. Now when I say paste bin, I mean something like this. So you basically can just copy paste the text in here, send me a link to it, and then I can go to it and copy paste it from there. Just know that there's tools like this that allow you to just share plain text nice and easily. Now the issue that you do run into is when you start working with multiple files. With multiple files, you can't really just send it all as one text file it's a bunch of different files. If you just copy paste them all back to back to back, then I have to look through your source code to try and find where one file ends and one file starts. That isn't really a great option. You could send a diff, but then I still have to go get your source code. It'd be nice if you could just send it all at once. And so that's where something like this cool tool that we'll be talking about today called Bundle comes into play. Now, something that you're probably thinking is why wouldn't you just use something like tar or something like zip? Now the issue with tar is the fact that a lot of people get confused on its usage and will usually send you a file that's encrypted in some special way that, you're not, that you don't have installed in your system, or they'll even misunderstand it and not actually archive the right files because the syntax is a bit confusing to new users. Now an alternative would be something like zip, which is by comparison, in my opinion, much more simple uh, syntax to use, but unzip isn't always installed on every system, so you can't really count on it either. So now this is where Bundle comes into play. Bundle has a very simple use case in the fact that it is much more simple than something like tar. You see with tar, you need to use tar to actually archive the file versus with Bundle. Bundle is really just a shell script and it allows you to basically take a bunch of files, take that text, put it all together, and then all the person that wants to extract it into separate files has to do is just simply execute the file. So this simplifies the process quite a bit because the person doesn't have to learn some new tool. All they have to do is execute it. <laughs> that said, it comes with its trade-offs of being uh, an easy opportunity for someone to create a Trojan horse. So I recommend that if you are going to use Bundle that you look a bit more at the file before you execute it just to be safe, unless you're receiving it from a source that you know that you can trust. Either way, I don't think it's a good idea to just trust sources, always play it safe. Installing Bundle itself is actually relatively easy. It comes from the Plan 9 project, so you can either install the Plan 9 port, which comes with a bunch of extra tools, or you can just have the actual shell script in your path. Um, I'll show you guys the shell script, and I'll put some stuff in the description, so that way you guys can go check it out for yourselves. Anyways, guys, if you're interested in other command line tools like this, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon, so that way you guys will be notified of my next video. Without any more delays, let's go ahead and take a look at Bundle and how you guys can use it. So just for reference, this is all Bundle really is. It's actually nothing too complex. Basically at the top of the file, right up here, we basically say, tells the user how to unbundle it by just basically running the file. And then for every single file that we give it, it will basically tell it that it should echo its name, just so that way the user knows what's being exported from a Bundle. And then finally, it just uses said to basically turn all of the contents of each of the files into its associated file in the current directory. So now one of the most common use cases that I run into is when people really need help with DWM, people run into issues and they don't know how to solve it. And it's really not the sort of thing that you can solve without being able to see what their code actually looks like at the time. And so DWM is probably the best option for something like this, since DWM itself is actually 
a multiple file uh, C program. So you have all these different files in here and you need to be able to package them up and send them to someone so they can look at your code and see where the issue is. So this is a pretty simple use case. So what you guys can do is you just do bundle. So the program bundle, and then you're actually gonna package all of it up. So you can do, so here I have actually set this up beforehand and we're gonna do config.mk, which is one of the files that you need, the make file, and then every C file and .h file. All right, that's basically what this says. And so if we just do that, it will actually print all of that to standard output. And so this is basically how it's all packaged up. As you guys can see, it will basically echo the file. And then you said, like I said before, to put the contents of that file into the associated file in this directory. So now what we could do is we could actually put this into a file called dwm.bdl or whatever you want to call it. Or you could actually do something else, which would be actually to send it to something like a paste bin, like we mentioned earlier. So here I'm actually doing, like I said before, so we're actually going to send it with curl. We're basically going to send it to a website called ix.io, which acts similar to pastebin, but it's a lot more simple and allows you to use curl to basically do it all from the command line. So when we do this, it will take a bit to send it to uh, ix.io, but then it will give us a URL. So now if we take that URL and we curl that URL, we'll actually get all the contents of what we had before. So now we could actually store it in its own file. So I'm just going to make a directory actually to put all this in. So uh, we're just gonna put this in dwm dash and then cd to dwm dash. And so now when we curl like we did before, we can actually go ahead and put that into a file. So we're gonna call it dwm.bdl. And then when we list it out, we just have that there. So now what we can actually do just to make sure that everything is safe, um, which I highly recommend, is we can actually do grep dash V, and then we're looking for everything that starts with a dash is basically what this is doing. And so we're removing all of that. So everything that starts with a dash is removed and it only leaves the stuff that's actually ran by the shell script. So when we do that, we can actually go ahead and look through. In fact, we could pipe that to uh, less and see the contents of it. Oh, there is the comment that we had before. And we echo said, do, 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 do. We can look through all of this and it looks all good. So now what we can do is we can actually just basically, now that we have the file, we can actually do chmod plus x to tell it to be executable. So now when we ls, we'll see that it is actually a colored. Uh, that's just part of my ls setup. So now we know that it is executable. We can do dot slash and this will basically execute it. Now here it's basically saying everything that we are exporting into files. And so now if we do ls again, we will see that we have all of the C files. So now when I run make, it will compile the DWM and we can do ls and we will see that we have all the appropriate files. So as you guys can imagine, this is uh, very useful for basically a simple way to send stuff back and forth between people that are needing to work on things. Obviously having to check the file isn't great, but if you guys are just basically giving each other the direct text file, then it's not really a big deal. This is just one example use case that I thought of that might be useful for some of you guys. Now, what I don't recommend is just piping it directly into uh, your shell, because obviously that is just asking for trouble piping the internet into your shell. One thing worth noting is the fact that you actually cannot use bundle on directories. It only works on files. So if you have a huge, a huge directory structure, bundle is not going to be an option for that. And that is one of its biggest downfalls. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys have found this useful. I hope you guys can see a good use case for this sort of tool. It's very simple. Like I said before, look in the description for just the straight shell script if you guys want it. Um, highly recommend it for very simple stuff, even just personal archiving, it can be useful. I'll see you next time. Let me know what you think. Do you think this is too insecure? Do you think this is totally fine? What do you guys think? Anyways, see you next time.